Hello everybody, it's Wendy and today we are going to do a fun little project with some resin and some seashells. So I am currently mixing my resin here while we talk. Um, resin, my favorite brand is this amazing clear cast uh, resin. I really like this. It comes in two parts. There's an A and a B and you mix equal parts of each. And when you first start mixing, I don't know if you can see it, it's very cloudy looking right there. You want to mix this until it is perfectly clear like water, but you don't want to mix it super fast. You want to mix it kind of slow because you're trying to limit the amount of air bubbles that you get in this. So while, we, while I'm mixing, I'm going to talk a little bit um, and tell you what you will need. You will need some seashells. Um, I actually picked these up at Nags Head this past weekend. Um, you want seashells that are kind of have a little bit of a deep middle to them, um, so they will hold the resin. And I am going to make pendants out of these. I've never seen anybody else do this, but I thought it would be, I was trying to think of something different. I've been making seashell jewelry, and I thought, well, if I could pour some resin and make like a little nautical thing, seen in the seashell that would be really cool and then make a pendant out of it so we're gonna give it a try see how it works I've never done it before but like I said it I don't know we'll try it and see so um I also have this resin mold that I may use if I have enough um, resin left this tall one but I'm not sure we'll see um I've got some glitter that I'm going to use and some charms here I have a little Miss Mermaid charm um I've got an anchor and a little starfish. And then I have a little piece of chain for the top of the anchor because I just think it's gonna make it look real if it has a piece of chain hanging from the top of it. So I'm just mixing the resin, like I said. Um, oh, you're also gonna need um, a torch or, this is a culinary torch. You can use a lighter, like a grill lighter. You can use any source of heat, really, um, just to get the bubbles out of your resin. So, as you can see, my resin is looking clearer, but there are still some little um, spots in it. So I'm just mixing until it becomes completely clear. Um, and it's really important that you get it mixed correctly, otherwise it will be tacky, it won't harden. So you definitely wanna get equal parts and you want to get it mixed up really clear. Now some resin doesn't require equal parts, it has different instructions all I've ever used is this amazing clear cast and so that's really all I know so just make sure you read the directions on whatever resin you're using um, to make sure that you do it right okay so it looks like I've got it mixed up pretty well so I'm gonna set it down here for a minute tap it to get some of the bubbles to rise to the surface I'm just gonna set it there and give it a little tap and then I'll take my torch and just torch a little bit not very you don't want to torch it for very long because if you do it'll like burn it but it just gets some of the bubbles to the top so that I can pop them and I just like to do pop a few of the bubbles before I really start pouring the resin um, just you know try to get out as many as I can um, okay so you're gonna need some stir sticks and you definitely want to cover your work surface in like something like I've got wax paper covering mine because you definitely do not want to get this on the table on I mean I've had it all over my hands but um, it's very sticky and messy and water does not clean it up resin does not like water so you will not be able just to take a washcloth and wash it off if you get it on you um, it's sticky like my hands are sticky right now because I've actually poured some other stuff today so all right, so I think the mermaid I want to put in the plain white shell just because I think she'll look good in there. And the anchor and the starfish I'm going to put in here. So I'm just going to kind of see how I want them to go. Another really good thing to have is a tooth is some toothpicks because you can kind of manipulate your um, charms around in the resin when you have some toothpicks to work with. So. And then little Mr. Starfish, whoops. He's a little sticky. I think I had some resin, got some stuff on him accidentally, but yeah. So I think we're just gonna kind of do it like something like this. 
maybe like that. Okay, so my resin's been sitting. I've popped the air bubbles, whoops, a couple times. I hope I didn't just <laughs> cook the top of it just then. Okay, and I think for the mermaid, I wanna use a little bit of glitter. So what I'm gonna do is take an extra cup Pour just a tad bit of the resin in there, not very much, and mix up, mix a little bit of the glitter in. And this will allow me to kind of paint the glitter on the shell um, without pouring it in the resin and just getting it, it'll just make it be a little more stationary so it doesn't flow around because I don't really want it going all over. I just want it in certain places. So let me add a little more pink in there. You want to use fine glitter. I mean, it really, it really looks pretty in the resin. So I'm just going to make sure that I, have, I think I may even put a little bit more. You can use just about anything in resin. You can use alcohol inks. Um, I have some alcohol ink pendants that I've made. Um, you can use nail polish. You can use eyeshadow. They make a pigment called Pearlex pigment, pigment that makes your resin look really pearly and pretty. So you can use just about anything in it. Okay. Now one thing you want to be really careful of, I have this sitting in another mold. This is a heart-shaped mold, but I'm obviously not going to be pouring heart shapes, but... I want to put, like on this one right here, I want to set it to where it's kind of leaning forward because I don't want the glitter to go up in this part. So I'm just going to take the glitter and put it kind of down along the edges here. I'm just really wanting to paint the edges with the glitter, the glittered resin, just like this. trying to give it a little little glam, a little glitz. She is a mermaid, you know. There's got to be some glitter involved whenever there's a mermaid. Okay. So I'm just going to paint it on here like this. It's kind of thick, like a paste. And The resin will flow whichever way that gravity is pointing. So, like I said, I don't want it to go up toward the top, so I'm going to try to keep it here pointed down a little bit. Okay, I kind of like that. Let's see if I can get that cleaned up a little. Like I said, toothpicks are great. Okay, and I'm just going to let that sit for a minute and get a little hard harden up just a tad bit so that it's not um, going to flow everywhere when I put the resin in and I see a spot that needs, it looks like maybe it needs a little right there. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to tip it up here. I put this popsicle stick underneath it so it will flow downwards if it's going to flow and it looks like it's just going to stay so that's good okay so now I'm going to take this clear resin I've already got my charms kind of where I want them I'm just going to pour the clear resin in and this one you want to sit to where it's not going to flow around I mean I don't want it flowing down I just want it Kinda hopefully they'll sit in there. Now this starfish, if I put him in there right now, he's gonna sink right to the middle. So I'm gonna pour a little more resin. Okay. And just kind of move these around how I want them to go. I want that tipped a little that way, I think. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I just don't want it to look crowded or cluttered. Okay, so I'm getting the chain in here. 
with the anchor and the chain's wanting to roll back down. You just have to kind of keep manipulating it. Um, it eventually will stay because the resin will kind of get hardened or thick and things will stay where you want them. But for now, I'm just going to try to manipulate them around a little. That's kind of cute. I kind of like it like that. Okay, so I'm going to tip this one back a little just so the resin won't run off the end. And we'll just let it sit for a couple of minutes and do its thing. Now, you want to torch them, especially the clear one. This one, not so much. The clear one, yes, you definitely want to torch it. Okay, so, hmm, I've got a little resin left here that I'm probably not, I mean, I still need some to pour that one, but, um, and I've got some glitter here. Let's see, what else could I do? I guess I could show you guys one of the alcohol ink. Let me see if I have a small mold, and I will show you how the alcohol ink works in the resin. Maybe if I have a small mold. I have lots of molds, but they're like shaped like animals and things, <laughs> which is not exactly what I'm wanting at this moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's a little heart-shaped mold. I didn't clean it out or anything, but we'll see if we can see if I can show you um, the alcohol ink technique. It's called the Petri dish technique. I'll move this forward a bit. And I do have my alcohol inks here. To do this, you need white and whatever other colors that you want. And I think I'm going to use this eggplant. And let's see, eggplant's probably kind of purple. And maybe cranberry. That might be pretty together. Okay. So this mold naturally dips down a little bit because it's not, I don't know, whoever made it didn't make it level. I ordered it off of Amazon um, or Etsy. So you just put a little resin in your mold like this. Don't want to fill it all the way up, but, you know, a little ways there. Okay. And just torch it just a I'll torch that one. Okay. Now, the technique that you do with this is you, you have to shake your alcohol inks really good. And for every drop of alcohol ink you drop in, you're going to drop a white um, drop over top of it. So here's the eggplant, and it's dark. It's almost like a black. Okay. So I may not want to use that cranberry because that cranberry is kind of dark too. Let's put a drip of white on top. Let me get maybe a blue. This light blue is real pretty. We'll try it. That might look good with that darker color. Okay, and then you drip them in. Just, yeah, that would probably be pretty. Just like that. And then a drop of white. I've tried this before and never been successful with it, so we will see how it works out. I don't know. Drip of blue, blue, drip of eggplant, and one more eggplant over here. Oh, got two. And then I'm going to do one more drip of the white just to kind of push the color to the front. And then I'm going to just let it do its thing. Whoops. Okay. Now, because um, they say you can get too much alcohol ink in it, and I don't want to do that. But I don't know. Maybe I should do one more drop of color. And these kind of will mix together. And like a chemical reaction happens or something. It's really pretty cool if I can get it to work right like other people do. <laughs> other people's they looked really great but mine it was like all the white went to the bottom for some reason and it just looked like a bunch of white. And I don't really know what I did wrong because I did it just like everybody else seems to be doing it but it didn't work for me. Okay so we're just going to leave that alone and see what it does and when I unmold all these I will show you it. Okay so back to Miss Mermaid. 
let's go ahead and let's tip this back just a bit and pour a little of the clear resin now I don't want it to mix a whole lot so I'm just gonna pour a little and it is kind of mixing but hopefully it will and I'm just gonna put Miss Mermaid in here kind of angled up because she's a little tall okay that's looking pretty good right there so we're gonna leave that and then just pour a little bit more because you want her covered pretty good with the resin okay and then I'm just gonna well I don't know if I need to pour maybe just a tad in this one okay all right, looking good. So let's torch them. I don't want to torch the alcohol ink one too much because I think when you do, it kind of screws it up. <laughs> it messes with it. Okay, so I do have this tall thing here that I could put something in, and I have a little bit of glitter left over. Glitter up. So maybe I might drop a little of this glitter in the bottom. We'll just see what happens with this one. Okay, I'll drop some more glitter in. It's kind of getting stuck on the side, but it should go down because it's not really set up yet. You have about 45 minutes, I think, to work with this alcohol or with this uh, resin once you mix it before it starts getting to the point where you really can't do anything with it. But, um, here in Fayetteville it's been really really hot <laughs> and I think when it's hot like this it actually um, is slower it mixes or sets up faster okay so let me see if I can get this off of here into the middle I'm trying to keep it off the sides but it did stick on the sides a little okay now let's see if maybe if I can get it to go down <laughs> Okay, we'll let that sit for a second. Now, these are looking pretty good. Just barely torch them. I really like the mermaid. That's pretty, and that one's looking pretty good, too. I kind of want the starfish to be a little bit more down here. Okay. And then we definitely want this to look like it's hooked to the anchor. Okay. Now, I could put a charm in here, maybe. I do have another mermaid. I wonder if I could put a mermaid in there. I don't know that she will show up with that pink glitter though in the bottom. Eh, we might try her. And just see. A lot of this is just experimenting around and seeing what, you know, what's what. Now, she's not gonna show up in the pink glitter though. I do know that. So maybe I can get it down toward the bottom doesn't seem to want to go down toward the bottom all the way. I wonder if I could just, well, I hate to put her in there because she's not going to show up in that pink glitter. I really don't know what else to do with it. Maybe I'll just pour some clear in <laughs> and make a glittery pink clear pendant. I don't know. We'll see. But let's put that in there anyway because I might as well use it. Okay. So there's that. Not sure what to do with it. It might just make it pendant. I don't know. Okay, torch these. Okay, and that's really all there is to it. It is super easy. Now it needs to set for 24 hours. You don't touch it for 24 hours. You just leave it, let it do its thing. Don't mess with it, even as tempting as it may be. Just leave it there. So 24 hours from now, I will come back and we will look and see what we have. So um, I will post that here tomorrow and stay tuned for that video. Like and subscribe to my channel. Um, I'm trying to grow the channel. We're at almost 600 subscribers, which I think is exciting and amazing. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of exciting stuff going on. Um, I'll actually have another budget bead box opening coming up here pretty soon, I think, and that'll be really fun. Um, so yeah, a lot of exciting stuff going on on the channel, but um, 
I'm enjoying it, trying to do some tutorials, because I know you guys like the tutorials, even though I'm terrible at filming. <laughs> but again, come back in 24 hours, we'll see what's going on with these, and I'll show you how to turn them into pendants. And I'll see you at the next video. Bye!